When I was a little girl, there was this song and it went something like, oh, I love eggs from my head down to my legs, right? So I will take that little tune and put whatever I want in it. Like today, I love birds. I love them more than words, right? Right? Okay. So maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm the weirdo out here who likes to randomly burst out into song, but I am. And uh, let's talk about birds. I want to bird watch. I want to go into the forest, sit with a pair of binoculars and just watch birds and then draw them. Why? I have no idea why, but this sounds really awesome. Last week on Instagram, I was drawing and sharing my sketchbook like I tend to do in my stories. And I thought, wow, look at all the different styles of birds you've come up with. Cause I do, because I can't draw in one style. I'm not a style girly. Okay, so I'm a style girly, but not like a style, like stick to one style and that's it for the rest of your life. Like life is way too short to stick to one style. I asked, if people were interested in my bird process. And to my surprise, people were like, yes, absolutely share your process. So here I am recording this video for you about how I draw birds. Here goes nothing. I hope you grab whatever bevy you want. Bevy, I said bevy. Grab your drink, your coffee, your tea, your water, whatever, and sit back and relax and maybe I'll teach you something and maybe I'll teach me something. Here it goes. We're going to talk about birds. First, I want to go into reference books. I found this book, Cran, An Artist's Colorful Guide to Drawing on the Go by Monica Forsberg at my library, but I'm going to buy my own copy because not only are there so many different kinds of ways to use my neo colors in here. There's just so many good tips, but she draws birds. And she even back here in the back of this book has tutorials on birds. So even step by step. And I just love this style of birds. I'm really getting into, I don't even know what kind of style you would call this style of art, but whatever it is, there are quite a few artists out there that have this kind of flat looking style. Cause I even just like the way that she draws her chairs. And I know I'm talking about birds, but the way that she draws her chairs, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's like not perfect where it doesn't have to, you can tell it's a chair, but it doesn't have to look completely like a chair. And that's the same with the birds. They look like birds, but they don't completely have to be absolutely anatomically correct. And they're fun and kind of scribbly. I don't know what you call this style, but I, it's just so different from anything that I'm used to because I wanted to train as an animator. So getting into this kind of style like listic like this has been really exciting for me. So this book is one that I'm definitely going to pick up my own copy of it because I just, I just love all the different ways that she draws with crayon. And that one is one that I look to a lot. I found this book I don't even remember where I found this book at first, but I picked this up from one of my local bookstores and it is just doodles. I am such a doodler. A lot of my style tends to be doodle, doodle, doodles. And camo or camo, I don't know how you pronounce that, but this one is how to doodle year round and the simple, simple bird, simple doodle bird. That is another way that I like to do birds. And I just think that it's a lot of fun. That's another one that I do. Another one that I have turned to quite a few times. I found out about this one from Natasha Newton here on YouTube. Uh, Imagine a Forest by Dinara Mirtalapova. And it's all folk type, but her birds, 
Ah, I keep I keep playing with the birds. And I I will show you here in a little bit how I've taken some of this this stuff and put it into my own style. But this is I I literally when I go through these, I go through them step by step. And I make them in my sketchbook step by step. And I did that with this one. And I can show you really quick. I did that just the other day with this one and then I made a whole bunch of different birds using the same style. And that's what I wanna talk about is that this. So this was like the complete copy, only I used my own colors because I didn't have these colors on me. And we'll talk about how I've changed it. And so that's one that I do. I really enjoy this whole book too. Highly recommend, I had to buy it after I saw it, um, especially for the children's book project that I've kind of put on the back burner right now, but that this one was to kind of get some design ideas for my children's book and incorporating forest pieces because it's a little Red Riding Hood story in the forest. So I thought this would be great. And so this has been great. And then I want to talk about classes I have taken. I have taken a whole drawing with Phoebe, Phoebe M, creator of Bobble Jot on class 101 and this is the basics of where most of my birds will start and or or did start because when I was first learning this is actually my sketchbook from 2021 November 1st 2021 through February 16th 2022 so it took me a lot longer to fill a sketchbook then because there's only four pa 40 pages in here. But this is what I was learning. I was learning hardcore and I was taking her course. And so you can see that I break it down. And I have both her books. This is the one that's just like mythical creatures. But the way that she breaks down anatomy and how she teaches things, you can learn even just from like a dragon or whatever that is, that is not a dragon. But a Pegasus, you can see that it's very much so her, her breaking down and her shapes have really helped me see how things are created. Okay, those are different styles that I like to copy, but this right here, this one is the, from the library because it's a bigger one. I have a couple of my own that are just birds of my region and area. My husband even just got me one for Christmas that has like a little journal in it. But this is just a guide full of pictures and I pull this out and I'm like, oh, today I want to draw pigeons or thrushes. I actually drew this little thrush because I think fat birds are so cute. So these are the things that I use. This is something that I'll, I will sit and I will look at the shapes because that's the thing about birds, okay? And I'm gonna show you now in my sketchbooks how I, draw, I go about drawing birds in different ways. Here is one example page. This page is one of my favorite pages in my sketchbook. I tried to make it a little bit more realistic. I was playing with hatching. I was using an, a normal pencil. I was using my Illo sketchbook that I always think that I hate and I go back and I'm like, oh, the smooth paper. And it works really well with ink and, and uh, pencil. And I just love this page. This page is one of my favorite pages I have ever done. And I just love the way that birds look. So this was, I wanna make birds more realistic than not, but I still wanna bring in the things that I like about my style that I have developed, like shape language. Shape is very important. And these ones, I wanted them to be a little bit creepier. And so I really focused on the pointy edges. A lot of the time when I am drawing, I draw cute. Cause you can see here, I went with a little bit cuter and I was like, nope, I'm gonna keep going. I think this was my first bird on this page. And I was like, nope, I want them to be more creepy because if you see on this page, I did take one and put it into an illustration and that, that never went anywhere. This was just a sketch a sketch idea of what could be an illustration. I never, I have so many of these in my sketchbook. That's beyond the point, but I take them into 
my sketch, but this was my original page. I love this page so much. And then let me find another page in this sketchbook. I'm pretty sure. I haven't finished the sketchbook, but I should. Okay, so there are a couple birds on this page. This is a lot of different things, but there are a couple birds on this page. And you can see that that one, there was this one, I redrew in a different style here. So I will take and play with styles. There's a different bird here, there's a different bird here. My favorite way to do birds is just a little like circle that's kind of a blob, but I have other birds in this book too just throughout, scattered throughout, I love birds. So like here, another one came through. This guy was just from a picture. This guy too. And they show up all over because I love them. Now here's another way that I've done it. So they're just different styles. And this guy, I just have fun with birds. And again, I loved that bird page so much in that sketchbook that I wanted to recreate it. And I did this page. Now these ones are a little bit different. And here I was like, I took this bird in different styles. This was the original like, okay, this is what this bird looks like how can I push the boundaries? How can I push it a little bit more? The same thing with that page in the back that I showed you that gave you a brief look at. The sketchbook is almost full. I'm very excited. But this was the original. And then I thought, well, what if I played with this style? And what if I played with another style? And what if I played with a different? So it was kind of like, here's what the original artist did to show the way that she stylized birds. So I took those elements that I thought were most important and moved it into this. And so you can see those same elements, they're just different sizes and different shapes. And this one I went with, okay, I kind of want to make it a little cuter than this. This seems very grown up to me and very folk art, which is exactly what that book is. This one is a little bit cuter and exaggerated, a little bit more cartoony. And this one, you know, has a big, the wing is the big focus. Whereas in this one, I think the wing is the big focus too, but it's more balanced wise, where this is like, oh, look at that wing. Oh, there's a bird. And then over here, I was like, okay, my cute styles. So I gave this one the same size head and body. And then I just gave this one like a body and I smushed it. So these are how, this is the kind of way that I play with different anatomy and different things. So I also do this, like I took that folk art, like I was mentioning earlier, I take that folk idea and the style and I add it to my own styles. And so I have this guy here where he's kind of in my own style. I love doing birds like this. This is my favorite type of bird at least for my, like when I'm doing cartoons and doing little illustrations and doodles. Like this is my doodle bird. This is what it looks like most often. This is what I use. I use Strathmore or what I'm going to use today, Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor Paper. This one is Hot Press in their 500 series. It's five by seven. I bought this when I was beginning watercolor last year and I don't know much about it. I just know that I like it, it dries really fast. And so if I want to go back and watercolor these later, I can. However, I just wanted to make sure that I had a piece that laid flat rather than trying to do it in my sketchbook. And I am going to pick a bird today and show you kind of how the process goes. Let's see, oh, he's cute. We'll do this, this painted red start. Okay, open this to a random page, and I love this little little guy's shape. So I am going to go and look. And now if this was my own book, and it's not, so I'm not going to actually do this, I would print this, I could print this, or you could print this picture out. I would trace to see the shapes. The big thing to me and how I do things are shapes. So I'm going to start with, I have a sketcher, non-photo blue pencil by Karen Dash. And so I usually do a lighter color and then I do a darker color. And this is my black wing red. This one does not erase, okay? So I don't use my black wings 
all that often, but I do like to use these when I am gonna paint over them because these are a little bit softer than the Prismacolor Coal Erase. I do like the Prismacolor Coal Erase, but these are a little softer so they don't leave marks like in the in the tooth. So I find that I can paint over it a lot easier and sometimes it blends in with my paint. I don't know. I don't know, use what you want, use what you like. I'm just trying to get better at watercolor. So I'm gonna start with just how I would normally start. And I'm actually gonna just look at his shapes. So he's got this main teardrop shape right here. So I will try to get that as best as possible. I really like to break down shapes. And so I will break down a shape just like so. So that's, that's his body. And now if you see here though, he's got kind of a wing too, and his wing is a teardrop. And I know from studying anatomy and studying different things, I know that this is made up of a bunch of feathers, right? We, we know that. Most people know that birds have feathers and they have more than one and their feathers all kind of come together, but they come together and then when they're out, they spread out. But this one isn't spread out and he has a tail, but his tail's a small tail. So that's the thing about birds is that a lot of artists will say, pick a tail and go with it. And so he's kind of got a smaller tail and then his head is like this. And he's kind of got just a like snout. So you can see that it's kind of like a circle, like a half circle here with a teardrop, so that could even be broken down into a circle and a triangle if you wanna break those down even more. Break down shapes, that is the thing. If you learn how to break down shapes and pull apart things and see their shapes, even with hands and, and everything, you are going to become such a better artist because you're visualizing these shapes and practice these shapes. So that is what that is one of the things that I have done so much is practice shapes. And I never give birds their actual talons. Their talons are basically like any bird has, you know, their leg and their leg has a joint and then it comes over and I know what it looks like. So it's got the one in the back so it can, you know, attach with their claws. And then it's got three right here. So, you know, they look like a raptor. And I, that's the part of a bird that really scares me, um, honestly, because they're like, their claws, they're gonna come and come at you. So I know how to do that. I know how to draw that. I know how that, that looks, but that's not how I like to even draw more realistic birds. And then of course he's got an eye. I like to do little eyes. And when I'm doing a more realistic bird, I leave the pupil and the color in the eye. I just leave it white. And so I'll go in here and I'll probably add a couple details. I'll give it a little shading. I know that I, I mentioned earlier, I wanna paint this. So I, I don't wanna do it to everyone, but I bring in some shading. I, I love to do that. I love to add a little bit of a shade and make it, make it pop. Uh, contours. So when you're thinking about a shape, you know, this isn't, this isn't just a circle. And that's the thing that I was talking about with the crayon, uh, that crayon book is that it's flat. And that is a very, that's a stylistic choice. Like I could make this completely flat if that's what I wanted to do. And there's some of that art that does that. But I think about my training of lighting, you know, where the light is, this is going to be your dark. And if this is all new to you, I'm not great at this. So go check out um, the book Color and Light, A Guide to the Realistic, the Realist Painter. So you can kind of understand what I'm saying. But like, here's where the, the source of light is. Here's where it so you can see that this has a round shape. So that right there, I like to make my things have round contour. They just look they, they just have volume. I want, like, I want it to know that it's not just a flat bird. This is a bird that has roundness. It's not just 2D, it's 3D, but it's on a 2D surface. 
So that is how I start with birds. So this, so if I was doing this, I would go over this with red. I want to leave this because I just, I like that sketchy look for my birds. And when I'm doing a sketch book page, I like to have them not all at the same level and completeness. I just think it looks fun on the page. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. That's just me. Oh, excuse me as I'm dealing with stuff. Anyway, I want to talk about now. So that is how I would look at this bird. And I noticed that here there's a little white. So that I would note in my design because he's got white. I would note that I'm going to note that in my head right now. He's just kind of a sketch. So when I am thinking about drawing something cute and I want to make it more cartoon and I want to make it more simplified or just fun, I will take it and I will push it. So here's the head. I always start with the head because when you're thinking about cute drawings, you're thinking about heads because babies, babies' heads are bigger. And that is the thing about like cute drawings or kawaii or like the little guys, the head is always the biggest part or everything's like smaller portions than that. Whereas when you look at this bird, even on the actual anatomy, the head is actually like smaller. And so that itself gives a bird a little bit more menacing of a look. So he's got the pointy beak, he's got all of that. And so what I like to do is I like to look, okay, I'm gonna keep that shape, but I'm gonna make it smaller than the head. And I'm gonna put it, you know, in the same spot. And then you can exaggerate the tail. I wanna keep the tail small because I just like how pudgy he is, right? And so, and then I would probably do a little circle here and then his beak, his beak is right here. So this is where that circle beak that I like to do that round. And then I just do a little eye and little legs. And so then I'll go in and I will take my red pencil when I know that I like those lines and I will make sure that the actual lines that I want are the ones that are kept. And I will even sometimes go in and add a flourish there. I like to add some little humps in places. And as you can see, I'm still looking at this bird and you would be able to tell when I colored this in that they were kind of the same. But, so I took this and I took those shapes. You've got all those shapes. They're just in a different ratio of size. Now, this isn't the only way you can do a bird. This is just like the first, like this is my instinct of what I like to do. I like to always go like that. But I can also make this circle here really round because he's real fat and he's got a really tiny head. And so you can exaggerate that and then he can still have his like beak like that. And then now he's, and he's got his, his, his teardrop and now he's a fat burb okay I just said burb yes yes I did and now he's different looking in that way so he still looks and can be the same bird it's just that mm, he ate a few too many bird seeds and you've got a, a bird with a little bit more character and I also sometimes will play with that. So that one's another one that I would do. And you can, again, go through and add your lines in. And I will sometimes even add in um, some detail lines. If I'm just gonna keep it black and white, I would add in detail lines like this. So I will I'll show you like this. I like to add line marks and give it a little bit of a line art type deal. And so then this one, if this is the way that I wanted to do it, I would color in this area a flat color. And so you can see in this space right here that it is a bird with 
a bit of a different look, okay? Still, I'm still using my reference to do that. And so you can still see those same shapes. Now, this is the other way I would do it. Another way I would go in here and I look and I sometimes will just look at the bird's full shape. So I won't break it down into one shape. I will break it down into, or two shapes, I mean, I'm sorry, two or three shapes. I'll break it down into one and kind of go, oh, so he's kind of looks like this. And then it's really just that. And then I will go in like this and I will give him a little bit of a beak and an eye. And then he's just really simple, just really simple. And so this is really trying to exaggerate that shape and make it a unique or a more unique shape that I'm focusing on. And I always forget the tail. Uh, the tail's not my favorite part of a bird. I don't know why, but uh, that's what I do. Um, and then the last one that I really enjoy is doing like just a blob. Okay, I love drawing blobs. I will draw like little blobs for rocks and things. And then he's got his little beak or a round one. So, so you can take this one or this one or this one. And then you give him a little, little teardrop right here. Give him a bigger eye. And you've got the shape of a bird, but just a blob. And w depending on where you are in your piece, these will look different. And so that's this is kind of what I do for birds. However, if I wanted to add some even, like I'll go in, I'll do one more. So I think I'm gonna go back and do a bird like this with the teardrop and the head. And I will put the little eye here and I will give him his little cuteness. And sometimes I do, I will say, I, I will put little feet, like feet like that. But most of the time it's just no feet or the little line. That's what I like to do. You are more than able to do whatever you would like. This is just how I do it. Okay, and so I go in with some little bit of folksy here and add a little bit of folk art, that folk inspiration, and give it a little flower head because that's what that one did in the folk art book. And so you can take this cute design, the more cute, I did make the, the body a little fatter because I wanted it to be fat, but you can do this and still have, have like all these different pieces and this kind of showing, like what I'm showing here is that you can take all of these different things that you're learning from all these different books and all these different references and make them your own. And that's kind of what I have learned through the process of these different daily exercises. I have birds all the time. And so you can see that I'm still playing with all these different shapes and styles. And so that's what I really want to inspire you to do is go out, find styles you like, try them out, get, get a reference book and play. Break down the shapes and then you can play with the shapes. That is, that, that's what I do. So anyway, I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that I explained this enough. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and send me a message. Leave me a bird emoji if you would like to. Uh, if you wanna share this video, please share because I know that this might help somebody because we're all doing the thing. We're all doing the art thing. Anyway, have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Bye.